I think if we continue on the current uh, trajectory, uh, we are looking at a mass, mass extinction of marine species. Even if only coral reef ecosystems go down, which it looks like they will, certainly by the end of the century, um, that would, in my mind, constitute a mass extinction event. And that's simply because of the huge diversity associated with those systems in terms of the actual reef building corals themselves and also the myriad of organisms. Uh, there are some scientific estimates, there are something like up to nine million species associated with, with just with coral reefs. Uh, however, um, many of the symptoms, if you like, that we're seeing um, uh, of change in the oceans indicate that the effects will be much wider than just coral reef ecosystems. Rising temperatures are, going to ch are already changing distribution of organisms. Uh, animals are moving further north or south as uh, basically to track the temperatures that they like to live in. Um, and of course the animals living in the tropics and at the uh, polar extremes uh, of the oceans, they don't have anywhere to go. So there's a good chance we'll see high levels of extinction both in low latitudes and in high latitudes simply as a, a result of uh, temperature change. Ocean acidification, uh, which is some, one of the sort of three things we um, know has been associated with uh, mass extinctions in the past, um, we're only just getting to grips with um, the effects of ocean acidification on marine organisms. Um, the more we learn, the more concerned uh, we become. We're discovering that not only does uh, um, acidification of the oceans affect animals that secrete calcium carbonate to build shells, um, but it also affects the ability of organisms to perceive their environment. Uh, it actually changes their chemical perception through smell uh, of the environment. Uh, it affects development and all sorts of other aspects of physiology of, of marine organisms. Um, it's really caught the scientific community by surprise and we still do not understand the full implications of it. Also, uh, with increasing temperature and the fact that we're pouring huge quantities of nutrients into the oceans, and this is things like agricultural fertilizers and sewage, um, we're seeing blooms of um, algae. Some of those algae are toxic, so they effectively poison the environment. Um, in other cases, the blooms are so thick that when those algae die, bacteria break down that material and use all the oxygen up uh, in the water and of course that essentially leads to suffocation of all the other organisms living in the environment and we're seeing a spreading of these so-called dead zones uh, throughout the world's oceans and they seem to pretty much track where the heaviest concentrations of humans actually are. The question of how um, the uh, impacts that we're having on the oceans will affect human life and how climate change um, uh, linked to the oceans will affect human life is a very complex one. Um, if we're talking in terms of fisheries, poor management of fisheries um, means that we don't reap the harvest in terms of food that we should be reaping from the oceans. Uh, we're actually extracting far too much fish, we're damaging the environment that they live in and also the fact that we're often removing keystone species, top predators that actually structure the environment means that we're causing um, really profound changes in the way many of these ecosystems are operating. The result of that overall is that one, the systems tend towards systems which uh, produce organisms which are far less useful to us, like jellyfish for example. The other uh, issue is that those systems become far less able to cope with shocks. Um, they become less stable and that really has quite profound consequences for us in wider earth system terms, if you like. 
Climate change um, effects are going to be extremely serious and it's interesting um, when you think many people talk about this in, in terms of what will happen in the future. Oh yes, my children will see the effects of this or their children or their children. Well, actually we're seeing very severe impacts from climate change already. And we have been seeing that since the late 1970s, uh, certainly for, for coral reefs. Uh, and this manifested in the form of this mass coral bleaching, which had never been seen before, at least had never been recorded in, uh, in human history. Um, so we're already there, really, and now we're in the realms of just how serious are we going to allow this uh, to actually get. I always like to picture this almost as though, you know, alien invaders have, uh, have arrived from outer space. They've killed off 19% of all our coral reefs. They've exterminated more than 90% of many of the fish species that we depend on and so on and so forth. Um, what would be the response? Well, it would be a huge coming together across the world to take some sort of action against these invaders that are destroying our planet. Well, actually, we're doing this already. So uh, what this really demands um, is uh, really global action uh, to really um, take serious action in terms of reducing uh, carbon dioxide emissions and to start to think about how we actually draw carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere because levels are already dangerously high, certainly for some marine ecosystems. For some of the problems we face, the answers are really simple. Overfishing is the result of too many fishing vessels, uh, poor management, um, the use of bad subsidies to support fisheries which otherwise just wouldn't happen because they wouldn't uh, be profitable um, and uh, really to deal with illegal trade in, in fish. We know all of the answers to those things and to actually implement uh, action to um, really seriously change what's going on in terms of fisheries I believe wouldn't take that much. Politically it may be difficult but uh, it's certainly well within uh, our means and is certainly a much simpler problem to deal with than the climate change uh, issue. I actually come from a family of fishermen and uh, I would hate to advise anyone to stop eating fish. Um, it's a fantastic source of protein if and it's a big if, it's harvested in a sustainable way. Many of the fish we see um, uh, for sale, not just in the UK but certainly globally, are not harvested in a sustainable way and I certainly couldn't recommend eating them. So if you do want to eat fish, I really suggest you do some research and find out uh, which ones are harvested uh, in a sustainable way. Um, and find out which ones are not harvested in a sustainable way and that doesn't necessarily mean that the stocks are over exploited. It could be that that particular fish uh, is associated with a very large bycatch of other species or it's caught in a way that damages the marine environment uh, such as using bottom trawls for example. I do think there's a sea change possible. I think people are starting to realise, and that's not just scientists, it's every, any person in the street, that um, uh, what's going on in the oceans is not just unsustainable and not just leading to serious degradation, but is actually morally corrupt. And I think people recognise that to go in, take the resources from a system and destroy that system effectively or destroy the resource is, is just not an acceptable way to behave in a modern world where um, we're potentially facing a very high human population and we really need as much food as, as we can get.